Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to show you how you can make a shared element transition. So you can see I have a fragment one here. And when I click on that image, it expands to fragment two. So that is definitely a very cool animation here when you switch fragments. And also when we go back here, then it shrinks down again. So I will show you how we can actually do that here with the help of the navigation component library, which is very commonly used in many projects. So we will start in a completely empty Android Studio project and go inside of our build.gradle module app file to include those dependencies for navigation component. I will paste these in here. You will also find the GitHub repository to this project in this video's description. We also want to make sure to include the, the save arcs plugin here for navigation component. I'm not really sure if we need this for this transition, but if you want to fully use this library you also want to be able to pass arguments between fragment transitions so we need to include this plugin and we also need to make sure to include a class path to this plugin in our build.gradle project file here so simply paste this here and as i said you will find all these um, dependencies and links in my github repository in this video's description then we can click on sync now or actually we need to first include view binding as well. So build features view binding is true. And then we can click on sync now. Let's first build our two fragment layouts in our layouts folder. Create a new layout resource file. Fragment main. We go to the code tab. And in here, we will create that image view. I will give it a width of 120 dp and a height of 200 dp. I will give it an ID of IV image. We want to set app colon source compat. Um, and we need to import this app here. Alt plus enter, create namespace declaration. We want to set that to, in my case, it's Kermit. So that is an image I already included here in my drawable folder. That is the image I use, but you can of course choose any image you like. And source compat is just um, a way you should always choose to set your image view resources um, because that is compatible to a lot more Android versions than just choosing source. Then we want to assign what is called the transition name to our image view. So when we use these shared element transitions, each view we actually want to have a transition between. So in our case, just our image view. Each of those views simply needs such a unique transition name. So Android can actually determine um, between which views it should actually perform that transition. I will give this image view the transition name image underscore small and we can then switch to our design tab set the constraints center it horizontally in parent and vertically in parent then we can create our second fragment where this image is basically expanded you can actually just copy fragment main and paste it call it fragment image go to the code tab and here I will, actually we can split this. Um, I don't think you see this, but um, here we can just set the width to 0 dp so that it matches the full width. I will set the height to 500 dp. Um, I will set the transition name to image underscore big. Um, so this must now be a different transition name than we had in this fragment main. Then I will also remove this bottom constraint here so that it just um, switches to the top. And I'll set the scale type to center crop. And the rest is actually fine here for this layout. Now we can create our two fragment classes in our main package, new Kotlin class, um, main fragment, inherits from fragment, and we set the layout to r.layout.fragment main. We copy and paste this class, image fragment, and switch the layout ID to fragment image. And now if you haven't worked with navigation component before, um, every time we use that library, we need to define a nav graph. So that is just 
a graph that specifies the transitions we actually want to have in our app. So from which fragment we want to be able to navigate to which. And we do this in our RAS folder. Right click, new, and red resource file. Call that nav graph and select navigation as a resource type and click OK. Then here we can add our fragments on that plus icon. We want to add our main fragment, which is our initial fragment that shows up. You can see that at that home symbol. And we want to add our image fragment. And to now um, specify that we want to be able to navigate from the main fragment to our image fragment, we simply use this bubble and drag it to our image fragment. And now the last step for our UI is we need to go to our main activity, so activity main XML file, to the code tab. And we want to replace this text view now first with a frame layout. Um, frame layout. We set the width to match parent and the height as well. We open this layout. And in here, we will have a fragment container view. So that will just be um, the container in which our fragments will be replaced by a navigation component. So we will give this container width and height of web a match parent as well. An ID of nav host fragment, that's how we call it with navigation component. We give this a name of android x dot navigation dot fragment dot nav host fragment. So just that the the content of this fragment is the actual navhost fragment from from that library we'll also set app colon default nav host to true and we want to set app colon nav graph to our nav graph we just created and we can close that tag then let's actually go to our design tab make sure to set the constraints here for the, for that frame layout horizontally in parent, vertically in parent, and that's it for our UI. So now we can go to our main fragment cotton class and actually first set up view binding. So private late in var underscore binding, which is of type fragment main binding, nullable, and we set it to null. And then that, of course, shouldn't be a late init var. And we also have a private val um, binding without an underscore, which is of type fragment main binding. And here we set the getter to our binding, and we assert this is not equal to null. Then we want to make sure that in, on destroy view, we simply set our underscore binding to null again, so we don't get a memory leak here. And in on view created, we initialize our binding. fragment main binding that bind with our view here. And now we can actually access all the views with that binding. So now when we click on our IV image, and then we want to perform that transition. And if we want to do that, we want to add some extras to that transition to navigation component so that it knows that we actually want to have a shared element transition here. So we have val extras, which is of type fragment navigator extras. You can see that takes a var arc shared element, and each of those entries, each of those var arc entries, is of type pair, of type view, and string. So here we can specify all the elements that we want to have a transition for with that specific. Um, navigation transition we perform here. So from fragment one to fragment two. And since we only have a single element here, our image view, we simply use that image view as a first entry of that pair. And we map that to the transition name we want to map this to. So we want to actually transition this to. So you can see here in our fragment main XML, this is our image view that we want to transition here, our IV image. That is the first parameter, the actual view. And we want to transition it to our fragment image XML. Here we have that IV image as well. But as a second argument, we need to pass that transition name of that IV image. And that is image big. So 
Here as a second parameter, we pass image underscore big. And then we can actually perform that transition. So then we use find nav controller dot navigate. Here we need to first pass the transition we want to perform here. So that is r dot id dot action main fragment to image fragment. That ID was generated from navigation component when we assign that transition here in our nav graph. The second and third parameter will be null and the fourth parameter will be our extras. And now just doing it like this is not enough. We need to also go into our image fragment and specify that we actually want to have an enter and a leave animation here from that fragment. We do that in onCreate. And here we get that animation from transition inflator dot from. And here we pass require context and we can inflate a transition. Well, if we would have our own resource here, we could pass that, but I will just use, let's do that in the next line, android dot r dot transition dot move. So that is this animation that will just expand the image view. And then we can simply set the enter, um, actually shared element enter transition to this animation and the shared element return transition. So when we press on back also to this animation. And that is actually it. So let's run our app now. Take a look here. And when we now click on that image view, you can see it perfectly transitions to the next fragment. So these are now two different fragments. When we click back, it transitions back. So I hope you like this video. If so, please let me know that below. Give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. And also if you're looking for more advanced Android courses, check out my website on um, the first link in this video's description where you will find premium Android courses that will just take you to the next level. Um, yeah, check it out, you will like it. I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.